So in our very first story, the Eastern region is likely to record more COVID-19 cases if adequate measures are not put in place to resource environmental officers. That's according to some environmental officers who there who say they are compelled to use tricycles, otherwise known as aboboya, and mini trucks to convey COVID-19 infected bodies to cemeteries for burial. Acting District Environmental Health Officer for Denchembo Ya Akwa Lati says this is due to the lack of her of her services to perform such tasks. Ms. Akwa Lati joins us now via Zoom with further details. Thank you very much, Mr. Lati. Now, what exactly are the concerns that you have? Your viewers and listeners. Yes, I ask, I I speak on behalf of our environmental health officers. I'm the National President for Environmental Health Officers Alliance Ghana. So I speak as the National President, but not the District Environmental Health Officer. All right. Yes. Yes, uh, our concern over the years is that when we first recorded COVID-19, when Honorable, the Health Minister Honorable Bokwaji Mamenu first made a written statement, of COVID-19 in Ghana. Then environmental health officers who are working under the local government service, for that matter, the Metropolitan Municipal and District Assembly, also mobilized our forces in able to curb the spread of the disease. Along the line, we were neglected or sidelined in some of the issues, but currently, we are frontline and backline health workers. So we are into the health education, the social distance, the hygiene protocols, because we are hygiene officers. And cool. when it comes to the barrier, we are at the back. So when somebody gets infected, isolated quarantine, and the person loses or expires, environmental health officer then comes over to do the disinfection and the barrier. Per the Public Health Act 2012, Act 851, it has mandated environmental health officers, that's the section 50, plus 1 and 2, has mandated environmental health officers to bury any cause. If the time I can quote the law and then make my point. Part 5 says environmental sanitation. Section 50, plus 1 says a person commits an offense if that person, A, unlawfully hinders the disposal of the dead body, or B, without lawful authority, disenters, dissect, or mutilates a dead body, or C, being under a duty to cause a dead body to be disposed of, fails to discharge that duty. Subsection 2 says a person who contravenes subsection 1 is liable on a summary conviction to a fine of not more than 50 penalty units or to a term of imprisonment not more than three months. I'm making my reference on 50 clause 1 C, being under a duty to cause a dead body to be disposed of, fails to discharge that duty. Yes, we have laid down our tools, although this law says we have failed, but Reference to section 118 and 119 of the Labor Act 2003, it has stated that if you are in a workplace and you realize that what your supervisor has given you will cause a health hazard to your life or a risk, you should report to the supervisor and leave that premises. So, if you hear us, our call now, we have laid down our, our tools simply because the government of Ghana, for that matter, the Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service has failed to give us the needed personal protective equipment, such as nose masks, wallacing boots, goggles, coveralls, scraps, April, the chemicals that will be used for the disinfection of both the body before the body is moved into the coffin and 
the head that will take the body along the communities to the cemetery. When the body is being removed, a chemical must be discharged in the head before the head leaves the cemetery. All right. Mr. Mr. Kualate, have you made these concerns known to your authorities? We have. And what are at they? The onset, yeah. At the onset of the COVID, we wrote an observation letter to four ministries and agencies. That's the Ministry of Local Government, the Ministry of Health, the Jubilee House, that's the Committee on COVID-19 at the Jubilee House, and the Office of the Head of Local Government, who is our management. And I was personally part of the team that distributed all these letters, and then we wrote our name at the reception. All right. Mr. Kualate, you say you are the national president of the Environmental Health Officers. So essentially, you speak for all the environmental health officers in, in the country. Exactly, sir. And you say you've laid down your tools. Exactly, sir. So is it, does this uh, laying down of tools apply to all the environmental health officers across the country, or it's, it's just in a particular region? Yes. What we have realized is that at the regional level, at the regional level, Let's take AMA, KMA, New Jersey North. They are the regional level. They have communicated to us that they take delivery or the regional health directives supply them with these PPEs because most of the regional hospitals are referral centers. So the rate of COVID-19 death occurs mass at the regional level, the range, the colibus, and co. So they take delivery from this. But we, those who are at the municipal and district assemblies, don't take the delivery from any of the district directors of health services. What we see is that when the body comes, the district directors call us for a meeting with the family, and what they have is what they give us. So we have to wait. So we write a memo to the district chief executive for them to provide some of the things that are lacking for the barrier. And it takes so much days and months before we get the money because we were under the Ministry of Health. And in 1994, ex President Raleigh's time, he made a call that Environmental Health Division at that time, our name was, we were working the division at the Ministry of Health to be moved from the Health Ministry of Health to the Ministry of Local Government. All right. So I'm asking this question about the impact or this strike that you're saying that you have embarked on because here in Accra, and I want you to hold on for me, because here in Accra, environmental health officers in the Accra Metropolitan Assembly have today buried bodies of eight persons who died from COVID-19 at the Woodhome Cemetery. The burial team led by environmental health director Joseph Asitanga followed all the COVID protocols. He has been explaining the processes to our reporter, Mami Esi uh, Nyamiche Fomsing, who was embedded with the team. So we'll go to him, and then I'll come back to you and, and take your thoughts on what appears to be a fractured front and how you think you're going to, to succeed, considering some of your colleagues are going ahead with COVID burials, even though you say you have laid down your two. So just do hold on for us. All right. Since the third wave started, how many bodies have been buried from COVID-19? Um, uh, let me say, since the third wave started, in a week, we don't bury less than five. Yes, so we even bury Saturdays too. Okay. So if we calculate weekly in a month, that will give us the figure. I have not taken my data yet. I'm yet to compile the data for the second wave. So I don't want to guess. But I'll give you those numbers in due, due time okay. as we are working. We never stop burying. Since 2019, since 20, late 20, early 2019 that we started, up to date, up to date, we've been burying. It's only that at times when the, the numbers are, the family gets stigmatized. So we, are, we always try to black out the media more, do the work on our own. When we see that the numbers are coming, we bring you in to help educate the public. Mm. That is the essence sometimes we bring you in. Okay. Yes. So today's exercise, tell us about it, how many people you've taken this, out and all that. Yes, today for instance, we have taken five from Rich Hospital. We've buried them. One is there. We are going to cremate that person. 
Two is coming from Ghana East, making how many? Eight. So that is only for today. Right. Yes. And tomorrow, uh, Saturday, we have two to be buried again. Okay. That is the day they fix because of their religious denomination. So sometimes we accept them by their request, then we do it for them. Okay. So what makes the one you're going to cremate different from the ones you're buried? Yeah, it's a, a request by the, the living person who passed on. During his lifetime, he might have put in a written document down that when he passes on, his body be cremated or handed over to government. But this kind of death, we cannot hand the body to government because we don't know the dynamics of the virus. Mm -hmm. So therefore, once he requests for cremation, we do it for them. Right. We have been doing cremation every week. Okay. Last week in our home, uh, Osu Cemetery, we do the cremation okay. all the time. So just take us through it. What is the process when these burials are being done? Well, how do you start? How do you end? Yeah, uh, as the protocols demand, when the person passes on and we are informed that the person dies, immediately the person will come to record his body in our office. Then we start the process from there. Bear in mind, the Lord will not permit us to give the bodies to the family members. So when the person passes on, we tell him we, we do a match of counseling to the person that this is an, a pandemic, and therefore the pandemic is handled by the government. So we have to handle the body. But we'll do everything possible to help lay the person to rest. So from there, we, at the mortuary level, the bodies are kept at a different section of the, within the normal bodies. So when the day for burial is coming, we go there, we disinfect the whole area. And the bodies we are taking, we do is disinfection. We disinfect the vehicle, the, the hairs that come, the coffin, even the grave, we do. The people who are to do the handling are adequately protected with the PPEs. You, the media people, before you have access to come and pro uh, join the program, we must protect you. Uh, yes, and then the burial is what we are doing now. We finish laying them, we are doing the covering. After the covering, when we finish all, disinfection will take place again before we leave this place. Yes. All right, so we're going back to uh, Aqua Latte, who is uh, also a member of the environmental. He says he's the, he speaks for all environmental health workers. Uh, so you're still on the line. You heard uh, Mr. Asitanga talking about the processes. And it appears that, well, it's like business as usual for everybody else. But you're saying that you're embarking on a strike. How do you reconcile that? Thank you very much, Isra. You see, uh, we live in a country that um, people have taken side. They, as I said earlier on, are the, because Accra is has Kolebu as a referral center, has Ray as a referral center, has 37 as a referral center for COVID. The death toll rises, and at the regional levels, at the 16 regional level, they have communicated, the state post have communicated to us, New Garvin, North has communicated to us that they take their personal protective equipment from the regional level. All right. So the regional health directors supply them as and when bodies come. But at the district, municipal and district levels, no regional or district directors supply us. What they do is that they don't supply uh, the warranty booth and go. What they give us are the coverall, the coverall, the white overall that we wear. The rest are being purchased by ourselves or the district assembly that we work. So that has been the problem. For them, AMA can continue to bury because they, they have the supply. They have the source that. They keep supplies of these PPEs, the coverall, the, the boots, and then the and go. But at the district, at municipal and district levels, we are lacking these materials. All right. Now, I want you to hold on. Uh, we have, uh, we're getting on to uh, Zoom and to speak with the national coordinator in charge of COVID burial and disinfection. She also doubles at the Metro Public Health Director, Madame Florence Cucci. Thank you very much, uh, Madame Florence Cucci. So, I don't know if you've been listening to the conversation I've been having with uh, Mr. Aqualati. He says that they're deprived. They're not getting the PPEs and the tools to work. And so they've laid down their tools. He says he speaks, he's a national president of the Environmental Health Officers. What do you have to say about, about all, all that he's had to say? 
Okay, thank you very much. And let me use this opportunity to say good afternoon to our cherished viewers. Uh, I will not want to talk much on what he says, but what I will say is COVID-19 case management is a circle. When a person is infected with COVID-19 and gets to the hospital, case treatment starts. When you start with case treatment, there's a cohort there. The cohort is either you recover and go home or you die and then you are buried. Immediately, a person passes on with COVID from the, the last office and the body is moved to the mortuary. It's now become the duty of the environmental health officer to give the befitting and a dignified barrier to the, the, uh, the seat. Formerly, officers were not given the needed resources for the barrier. As it stands, I'm sure some assemblies are still having issues with it. But what I will tell those assemblies that are not having the needed logistics is they should not work in isolation. We are supposed to work in collaboration with the Ghana Health Services. That is the district health directorate. If you are faced with a COVID barrier and you do not have the necessary logistics, you talk with your district directorate, then they will provide you with the necessary logistics. Because Accra, it is the Ghana Health Service that give us our PPEs that we use to bury. That is why we haven't laid down our tools. So maybe at their level, they do not have the requisite logistics. So he may be talking for his district, but not the entire country to the best of my knowledge. Thank you. All right, so how do you, how do you believe this issue can be resolved? Yes, even if he's speaking for his district, and uh, some other districts around the country. How do you see us addressing this challenge? So what we will do is, I, am, I will plead with my other colleagues, they should try and contact their health directorate. Let's take it from there. We should not work in isolation. Right. PPEs are not brought to the assemblies. All PPEs are sent to the health, the district health directorate. That is where you can get your cover roll, your Wellington boot, your, uh, your gloves, your goggles, and all that. Because when we are going to bury, one person uses not less than five tools. We have the coverall, we have the N95, we have the goggles, we have about three sets of uh, gloves that we wear. And then we have the parazone, or what would I say, the chlorine. The zero, then we mix it into three, uh, two bases. We have the 0 0.5 chlorine mixture that we use to disinfect the bodies and then the other articles. Then we have the 0 0.05 chlorine that we mix to disinfect ourselves after handling any article or after the barrier. So if other assemblies are there and they are not having the logistics, I think they should try contacting the health the, they are held this uh, uh, directorate, and they will be of help to them. It Reason is. being that COVID logistics are not sent directly to the assemblies. It is sent to the Ghana Health Services at the various district health directorate. Is it also fair to say that these, if you don't have, if uh, the environmental health officers don't have the adequate logistics, they can just decide that we're not going to bury the, the corpses until we have them. That is what I'm saying. Maybe in that uh, district, they do not have, if they do not have the logistics, uh, uh, PPE is to use for the barrier. Their health is also important. Their health matters. Because when we, what we do is, we try as much as possible to put in place the infection prevention control measures. And by putting in place the infection prevention control measures, you must first of all protect yourself before you can protect your neighbor. So if I am handling an infected body without the necessary logistics, then it's better I get it before I do it. Even if you give me half, it is not up to. 
when you give a, a barrier team only Cabaro, Cabaro alone cannot conduct a barrier. You need Wellington boot. You need N95. You need goggles. You need gynecological glove. You need surgical glove before you get the utility glove to put it on top. Aside that, you need chemicals. You need a knapsack machine. So if you don't have all these things, you don't have to put yourself at a risk. Yes. You need to get these things before you can conduct the barrier. I also want to find out these uh, overalls. I see that they are being disinfected. Are you disinfecting them to reuse them? No, please. They are not being disinfected to be reused. They are being disinfected before they can burn off. All we right. call something donning and then donning off. All right. Before you don, it means you are putting on all your preventive tools before you can carry out the barrier. After the barrier, you have to don off. And by donning off, you have to disinfect yourself with the 0 0.05 uh, chlorine mixture to ensure that what you are going to remove, there are no pathogens on them. You are free. So to keep yourself safe, before you can uh, uh, don off. Because during the donning off, if you are not properly disinfected, you can also pick some pathogens during that period. All right, now I'm going to put this question to both of you, uh, Madame uh, Florence Cucci and uh, Aqua Latte. I've been reading some literature about infections, been picking up COVID-19 infections from deceased or dead bodies. And it appears the risk of transmission is quite low. Are you, do you have any contrary information? I know that in the, in the initial stages of uh, the pandemic, we, everybody else was concerned and we appeared to be quite uh, fixated and ensuring that in disposing of dead bodies, there's a certain protocol. Do you think it's about time we revisited the protocols? Yes, that is why formerly we were not even allowing family members to follow out to the cemetery. All right. But now you can see that when we are going for burial, some family members follow us to the site. All right. They even put some things in the grave. But formerly it used not to be so. So that's the point. Is it, do we need to relook at the protocols and do we need the environmental health officers to be completely kit in the overalls and everything else, or we can reduce the amount of PPEs that we're using for, for the exercise? The issue is, it's an infectious disease. Studies are still coming out. A lot of issues are still being revealing. As we talk today, some are saying it is even a bacterial infection. Others are saying it's a viral infection. Others are saying it's a zoonotic infection. Nobody is yet to come out with the actual cause of this uh, virus. So it is better to put on the infection prevention control measures. As the saying goes, prevention is better than cure. Nobody knows what will happen. Virals continue changing and changing. Now we are hearing the third, uh, this uh, third, third trend wave. is what? The, yeah. uh, 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 Third wave no, of, uh, delta, the, delta, the Delta variant yeah. is very, very uh, fast in transmission. But nobody has come out with what causes the Delta variant. The incubation, we know the incubation period is still the 14, the 7 to 14 days. But the causative organism, nobody is yet to come out with the causative organism. So right. it's better we Ma protect Ma ourselves. Madam Kuchi, you know, as we're speaking, we're watching on screen right now. There's a visual on screen. I, I believe you can see it too, where we yeah. have the environmental health officers in uh, mm. fully kit up in, in their PPEs. And yet there's a, yeah. a gentleman who's walking around who is bare chested and he's not even wearing nose mask and he's giving you directions or giving the environmental health officers direction. I'm, I'm you know, struggling to understand what is happening. Yes, that is why I'm saying, you know, some of those people, they are not part of the burial team. Maybe they could be working at the cemetery or something. And some people too, they could even be some family members. Because some of the family members are so adamant. As much as you want to control them, if you don't take care, they'll even beat you. There are times environmental officers are beaten at the mortuary. And they leave bodies and go. 
then we look for reinforcement before those bodies are picked. All right. So some of those things we see there, they may not be environmental health officers. It's just a family member who still want to say, yes, whatever it is, I must take part in the barrier. All right, and I want to put the same question to you, Mr. Aqua Latte. Do you think it's about time the literature on the COVID-19 protocols, as far as Braille is concerned, is revisited? Uh, Israel, I think uh, you made a comment or a suggestion or a statement that it seems the infection rate of COVID dead bodies are low. Israel is not low. Look, the COVID-19 dead bodies are not embalmed. When I say embalming, they are not injected with formalin and formaldehyde. All right. The normal bodies that you see around, when someone passed out, because the law mandates environmental health officers right from the hospital to ensure that every dead body, every corpse, pass through the right channel from the mortuary straight to the cemetery, because we also control the cemetery per the Public Health Act, Section 50. So the infection rate of COVID-19 bodies are not never low, because still the virus lives in the body. And because the bodies are not embalmed and are only put in the body bag into the morgue, because the body bag looks like a leathery uh, rubber plastic thing, water is impermeable. Water cannot, water in the, the cough cannot come out, or fluids in the cough cannot come out, and the fluid outside cannot enter. So the body is taken into the morgue as it is in the body bag. And because the cooling system or the morgue or the fridge cannot have a direct effect on the skin of the core. So as and when the body stays longer in the morgue, it tries to decompose, making it highly infectious. So infection rate for COVID-19 bodies, as people may say, it, is not low. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Aqua Latte and uh, Madam Florence Kuchu for joining us for this conversation. Me meanwhile, we've also been speaking with some, some family members uh, who, of the deceased who are casting doubts that their relatives died of COVID-19. So that's another conversation, but let's hear them. Mami, we say no COVID-19. Me, because I covered no kuna can a mana a baby share wom hospital or no mininano. Can was some qualantine wom. I then your giant qualani no more sent pee. And yes, you know, you're being a be. Swan, which is yet to be as an as a moyasa. Eh, ya pa. Eh, ya. Yes, sure, no, I think, sir. And then, and any ten days. Okay, but um, you understand that this is a the COVID 19 burial. Minion, when you're COVID 19. Okay, you disagree she had COVID-19. Yes. Why do you say so? Because uh uh onya COVID and nipa near one in chain son of a free mono and can you be mobile isolated yang. But here lies the case, Miniano A Yare, we are no kid like kidney uh muse uh kidney failure and miniani free mo muse uh mo person would call special word. We didn't some few hours, most wa 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 contradictory to COVID, right? When you are here, no, you are one in chain. We die in my coy. Next is four coy. Next is four coy. Until now, you are here, no, a a a a real and I say a real. You buy much your home. Or more attendance for much more your no. Or more say PPEs, but or more more later on. Or more or more or more PPEs. That shouldn't be. This is not the country. Well, what do you suspect killed your sister? I cannot 